I am Lieutenant Drew Gray, Natalie Boria. I'm the damage control assistant on board the ship. I'd like to welcome you all to the USS Cole. Let's go take a look. All right, so this is our flight deck. What makes us different for a flight one DDG versus a flight two is we don't have any hangar bays, as you can see. We do work with MH60s, SH60s. We can do vert wraps on here, packs, transfers. We can in-flight uh, refuel a helo if need be. Um, they can also land on deck and we can refuel them here as well. This flight deck uh, played a very large role after the bombing. Uh, this was kind of the heartbeat in the hub for the crew. This is where they ate and they slept several days in the Gulf of Aden. Uh, while they were still fighting to keep the ship afloat. Uh, so from here, I'd like to take you guys all to our central control station, CCS. That's a great crew. And this is the USS Cole, so it's well known on the waterfront more than probably a lot of other ships. But the Terman Warrior lives up to his expectation. I'm just glad to be a part of it. All right, so welcome to uh, central control station, or as we call it, CCS. Um, as I said, this is the heartbeat, the hub of engineering department. Uh, we've got our UCCs, our universal controlling stations that are able to um, control and observe everything that goes on in the plant. Um, so our EDO today, our engineering duty officer, is uh, GSM-1 Henderson, and he'll be able to explain um, in more depth of, of what goes on and what um, him and his sailors do on a daily basis. GSM-1 Henderson, engineering duty officer for the day on board USS Code, due to section 505. I'll be introducing you into the Universal Control Console. This right here is the heartbeat of the hull of the ship. We have four of these consoles throughout the ship. Two here, one in each main engine room. And there are factors for the engineering department by being able to allow us to monitor and start stop equipment from CCS as far as auxiliaries, electrical controls, electrical distribution, and propulsion plant. They're gonna be basically the eyes and the ears for the control console operators for CCS, whether in port or underway, aux steaming, right? Uh, this way, I'll point you around to the DC plates, right? This is like a Google Maps, giant poster of the ship, each layer of the ship from 05 all the way down to the fifth deck below. Um, whenever we have casualties uh, and we're fighting, trying to defend the ship, in order to properly see what the watchstanders see, because we don't have cameras throughout all of the spaces, we have to be able to navigate and plot through these systems to help assist the watchstanders at all times when they're trying to defend the ship. This right here is also going to aid us in our damage control efforts throughout the ship. This is our damage control console where we start and stop fire pumps, ventilation to uh, help de-smoke spaces, whether we uh, have to open up drain valves to help dewater in case of flooding events. And so uh, all of this stuff is controlled in port by one watch standard. And that about wraps up everything for the engineering department, central control station slash damage control station. And thank you for your time. Another awesome piece of coal history that we maintain on board are the engineering logs from October 2000. It's pretty humbling to keep this box here right in DC Central. And I come here, I'm plotting, um, directing our sailors where to go. I always have this box here to remind myself of our coal heroes who kept this ship afloat and what our job and our mission is to do on board. Uh, so from now, we'll take you guys to um, our Hall of Heroes. All right, so welcome to the Hall of Heroes. Um, as you saw when we entered through the medical P-way, I removed my cover. Um, tradition on board coal, through the medical P-way, our Hall of Heroes and the Chief's Mess P-way, we remove our covers to honor um, our 17 sailors. Um, this is kind of the central location of the blast site. Uh, this is also the entrance to the Hall of Heroes to get onto the mess decks. Um, we have our 17 sailors right here, and on the deck we have our 17 gold stars that we walk past every single day. Um, and again, this is another heartbeat central location for the ship and for our uh, sailors. So these 17 shipmates of ours, they're never far from our minds at all. Um, it's a humbling experience to walk through this P-way, remove the covers, always reminds us um, what we need to do and what our focus is on a daily basis. So from here, I'll take you on to the mess deck. All right, so welcome to the mess decks. I want to uh, show some of the significant flags we have displayed on the bulkhead here. This first flag I was flying on 12 October, uh, the morning we were bombed. A very significant key to this flag is we had it flying for nine straight days. The captain, Commander Lopo at the time, he didn't want to retire the colors until all of, all of our shipmates were recovered. Uh, the second flag, 
from 9 December 2002. Uh, that's when the remains of our fallen shipmates were committed to the sea. And that was the flag uh, that was draped over their casket. This th third flag here is from 9 July 2006. And that was the first time we returned to the Gulf of Aden since we were bombed. As somebody who's deployed on board coal and been through the Gulf of Aden on coal, it's a very significant um, time uh, whenever you go through that area of the world. Something that we never forget as, as uh, coal sailors of the sacrifices that our 17 sailors and all of our coal heroes made to keep coal afloat uh, when they were in the Gulf of Aden. So also displayed on our mess decks, we have a shadow box of Sergeant Darrell S. Cole and the medals he received um, while in action. But most notably, we have got the Medal of Honor and the Purple Heart, which he was posthumously awarded. Uh, for more information on Sergeant Cole, here's a short video. Sergeant Darrell Samuel Cole, the United States Marine Corps, who was posthumously awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor, the nation's highest award for valor and bravery. On February 19, 1945, during the battle with Japanese forces at Iwo Jima, 24-year-old Sergeant Cole led his machine gun section ashore in the assault of the island. When one of his squads became pinned down by enemy fire, Cole, armed only with a pistol and hand grenades, crawled forward, destroying two gun emplacements with the grenades. After the destruction of the enemy positions, Sergeant Cole was killed by an enemy hand grenade while returning to lead his squad again. Sergeant Cole had also seen action at Kwajalein, Saipan, and Tinian. All right, now I'd like to take you guys to the Chief's Mess, Costello's Cove. All right, before we get to the Chief's Mess, I want to show you guys that this is at the port side of our ship. And this is where the blast occurred. We had a 40 by 60 foot hole uh, blasted into our ship. And the mess decks right here is the central location of that blast. The deck beneath us all the way through the overhead was completely destroyed. And as we walk past the chief's mess down below, we have the general workshop, um, our main one engine room and the oil lab. Those three spaces were also um, heavily destroyed and that's where we suffered our greatest damage. And these were uh, where the majority of our casualties were that day. So I'll take you on to the chief's mess. As I said, Chief's Mess, uh, we call it Costello's Cove. It's named after ETC Costello, um, chief on board uh, on 12 October 2000. He was eating lunch that day um, when the blast occurred. And for more on Chief Costello and our Chief's Mess, I'd like to introduce you to Command Master Chief Reyes Velez. Good morning and welcome aboard USS Cole. We are right now inside the Chief's Mess, which have been dedicated to our shipmate, Richard Costello. Rich joined the Navy back in 1988 and in a few years, he was selected to the rank of Chief Petty Officer. Oddly enough, that is the year where on October 12th, the ship was bombed in Yemen and we lost our shipmate, Chief Costello. In our humble grace to remember his memory, we dedicate this mess. We feel every day the spirit of those that lost their life on that fateful day and it brings the crew together to accomplish greatness and to be true to the fighting spirit of the Navy, to uphold honor, courage, and commitment to its highest standards. All right, so I'd like to take you guys down to the entrance of our main engine room, our oil lab, and our general workshop so you can get an idea of the gravity of the blast and uh, the damage that we suffered. So right here, this is the entrance uh, to main engine room number one. Uh, this is where we had um, a few sailors that day, as well as our oil lab. This is where our MPA at the time, a Lieutenant Drew Grade Triplet, um, he was working um, on the morning of the 12th. Um, and then over here, I've got our general workshop. You can see we have um, H-2 Claude Felter's plaque probably displayed on our shop. And my sailors, our DCs and HCs, take a lot of pride in what H-2 did for the ship as well as, again, all of our 17 heroes um, and coal sailors. All right, and now I'd like to take you guys up to our pilot house, where we drive the ship. I'm OS1 Kenyatta Handy. Being on the USS Cole, um, knowing the history behind it, it means a lot to me. It kind of brings history full circle, because most of the time we think about history being a long time ago, but I'm, I'm living in it. 
um, carrying on the tradition of what USS Cole stands for. Welcome to the pilot house. This is where we drive the ship and navigate the ship. And first stop I want to show you is our chart cable. We used to use paper charts, now we've made the transition to electronic chart display. So we have here is our voyage management system. This is what we use to navigate the ship while we're underway. And as you can see in here in the pilot house, we've got a great view looking out the windows. We have these, uh, these brand new consoles right here. And part of the uh, shipyard period, we got uh, upgrades something called the Integrated Bridge Navigation System. And part of that system is these consoles where we can display a lot of information. And that's so we have the, the chart display, we've got the, the rudder and the propulsion control. And so all this information really helps the situational awareness for the bridge watch standards. Additionally, we have an embedded training system. So we have these two large screen displays uh, up here right now and we're getting ready to do a training scenario for one of our junior officers. So this is very similar to what we do in the simulators ashore. Uh, now we can do it on our ship. As we move around, I want to show you the helm console. Now while we're underway, we'll have a sailor, the helmsman, here driving the ship. So this is the helm, controls the rudder. And then we also have the propulsion control, controlling our speed. And this is a touchscreen uh, throttle control right here. Lastly, I want to show you these plaques. We have 17 of these plaques posted throughout the ship, each commemorating each one of the 17 sailors who lost their lives 20 years ago. And these plaques and these sailors serve as an inspiration to us, today's determined warriors. It was their heroic efforts that motivate us every single day, and inspire us towards elite performance. Well, that concludes our tour. If you'll join me, we'll head down to the fantail. It's humbling and knowing that we're walking in the footsteps of sailors who served on board here and she, she was actually attacked. I have a lot more respect for everything that happened. I have a better understanding now from the middle school time frame when this actually took place. And just honoring all 17, it just changes your mood, knowing that you're here to do a job and make sure everybody goes home safe. Well, that concludes our tour for today. We hope you enjoyed it. We'll always remember 6-7, and we hope you do too.